easy. Oh, here we go. Meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. Oh, thanks. I'll just get the tip off on Chloe. And we should be good to go. Oh, you guys can start the meeting. You're live now. Thank you. Okay, well, welcome everyone along today to um, the hearing for the amendments to the Otago Regional Council Navigation Safety Bylaw 2019. Uh, just introduce ourselves to anyone that might have joined us uh, on live streaming. So I'm Gretchen Robertson, I'm a councillor for um, the Dunedin constituency, joined with Gary Callagher, constituency of uh, Dunstan, sorry, I always want to call it Central Otago, Dunstan, and London Cleaver Harbour Master from Environment Southland. Thank you. Uh, in the room with us as well, we've got um, Vicky Swaney, who we're taking uh, minutes from this hearing, and Steve Rushbrook, Harbour Master for Otago Regional Council. So uh, the proceedings today then, we have got three submitters uh, and I understand that there has been um, contact with these submit submitters since they have made um, submissions, but we have before us those submissions and we've read them. Uh, we have the bylaw itself and I've read through those changes as well, proposed changes, sorry. Uh, how we'll probably run it today then is we'll ask Steve to just outline um, what those changes are briefly and um, talk about the submissions and the process here today and whether or not we've made any progress since we received the submissions. So over to you, Steve. Cool. Thank, okay. you. Thank you very much. Um, Okay, so just a bit of background on the uh, Navigation Safety Bylaws to start with. Um, they were prior to last May when uh, we, the ORC, um, signed and sealed a new set of Navigation Bylaws with the previous ones expired, long expired, I might add. Um, we since have had um, a request from Central Otago District Council to um, transfer the maritime delegation that uh, we delegate to Central back to the ORC. Uh, by the way, as part of that process, uh, we've looked at and we've had to merge the two sets of navigational bylaws together. So Central Otago's uh, navigational bylaw was uh, redone in 2017. Ours was done uh, in uh, the middle of 2019. And essentially both of those documents have been merged here with this process, um, along with the reverse of delegation for maritime activities in Lake Dunstan, essentially. Um, so yes, it's uh, we, the essentially what we've done with the, the new set of bylaws is we've taken um, all of the good parts of uh, centrals and the appropriate parts of centrals that weren't already covered by what we've done last year, and we've adapted them into the, the overall set of new bylaws. Um, and the big plus of that is it gives us consistency for recreational boaties and people boating across our waters. Um, in, instead of having three sets of bylaws across the target, we now have two, um, with Queenstown being the other set that sits remote from us. So it's given a lot more consistency. And it's also uh, a really good time to bring the central ones in line with our neighbours to the south and the Ecans and north um, uh, and give a more common flow across the borders as well. So we're getting consistency in that way as well. So essentially this document, this new document has not changed too much. We, we've done things like all instant reporting from the back of the document to the front of the document because we feel they're more important. We've aligned one or two areas into the right area so the, doc, the document's more appropriate as you read through it. Um, and the biggest part of the change in here is the addition um, in part six of the special uh, conditions for Lake Dunstan. So uh, there's a, there's a large, large amount of uh, water skiing uh, that takes place and we've incorporated a lot more rules and regulations that was already in the central stuff into our, into our bit here. Um, so they are a lot clearer for the pumps to use. And we've updated one or two of the maps and charts as well um, just to accommodate that change 
um, and, a, and a really good sort of uh, key diagram of where you can do certain things in Lake Duxford as well. Um, so essentially, that, those are the main changes. Um, the document is really, really still, from my point of view, it's fit for purpose. It's it's good for ten years. Um, we we initially in the previous review, cold a lot of stuff wasn't up to date, wasn't applicable for what we do, how we do it, um, and this document is just another enhancement of that to include Lake Duxton as well. So hopefully it goes a long way to helping the education improvement process as we go forward with that. Um, so unless anybody's got any questions around that, I'll, have, I'll move on to the submissions if that's okay. Can I ask one question? Yeah, that's if you want to. Um, we'll just when, as it comes to the process and the submissions, yeah. Then, um, do you think that the, uh, we've only had three submissions? So, is that an indication of the quality of the document and the um, the detail that's been tailored to date? That there is expected to be um, general acceptance by the, by the public. That I'd like to think that's the case, Gary. <laughs> yes, it's an excellent document. I think. Um, I think. Yeah. The, the, we've spent quite a bit of time on the water in Dunstan in the past twelve months. Um, in sort of anticipation of this, and all of the feedback and interactions on the water and around the water have been positive. Yeah. In the oh, we've got a harbour master, you know, uh, where are the rules? You know, here are the bylaws, here is this instruction, is that, and they've been nothing but positive. So, I think people looking at it from the outside in, um, I, I guess not too many people are going to look at the fundamental detail of the bylaw, but there are national rules and stuff that affect people. Um, so I think one or two key players have come out. It's very seasonal in my view. Um, so yeah, it is a good document in my view as well, because it, it's there's not much to question here. I think the previous process, um, we had 38 submissors, um, and a number of those were heard. And the finite detail in that was drawn out right there and then. And, and not much of that finite detail, if any, has been changed in this this session. So really it's just an enhancement. So yeah, I think people, um, there, there's a likelihood that, you know, in the current times that um, not many people looked at it or not many people had a, had, had a cause to look at it for whatever reason. Uh, but I, th I think going forward, it's a good piece of legislation for us to be handed to people and, and to educate people on. And I even first up, it's a face-to-face -face usually, um, you know, and then here are the rules and regulations, but it's really, there's not, not been too much education or interaction on Lake Dunstan for the last few years in regard to that. Um, and this is very specific around that. So, and it's been well received so far, even though we're not technically owning the area as such, we're still warranted by CODC as the Harbour Masters to fulfil that function for them at the moment. Um, so we've had some time in order to see it. So hopefully that answers the question. It does. Yep. Thank you. Any, any I was um, just wondering then to do with the, um, well, there's a meaty part of it to do with the Lake Dunstan area and the special speed zones and those types of um, roles that have gone into the bylaw. Uh, you're saying that they have been developed earlier through earlier processes or are they something new that's been introduced here? No, these are all, um, all of the special speed zones. Yeah. Um, for Lake Dunstan are as they were previously. So these are already established um, areas. Yeah. Um, we have not um, altered these in any way, shape or form. We've taken them straight out of CODC. We yeah. think they're fit for, we've looked at them in detail. We think they're fit for purpose at the moment as, as it currently sits. Uh, and we didn't see any reason to change these at this time. So okay. we've got those all in place. Yeah. There, there is a chance going forward that we will, and, and I'll probably talk to it a little bit more in the submission, one of the submissions here, that we will, um, We'll assess those areas as we go forward, but at this moment in time, there's no real need to alter this, this setup on here. It, it seems it works, it's yep. the purpose as it currently is. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, submissions. Okay, so on the submissions, then we had three submitters, um, and I'll just work, work through all of the information is here available, um, and I'll just work through my points. So I'll start with. Oh, just no, sorry for everyone yeah, that's watching that. We didn't have anyone that wanted to appear today and present their submissions. So um, that said, now would be the chance for the submitters to present. However, um, nobody wanted to be heard. So it's kind of like a, um, a, a response now, I suppose, session of the hearing from our Harbour Master from ORC. 
So with regards to any matters that they want to raise in their submission, rather than us summarising the submissions for the submitters. Yeah, so that's what's happening now. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. OK, thank you. Um, so the first submitter um, was a, a resident and a user of Lake Dunstan, um, and essentially was in uh, full support of the transfer of delegation and the, the Harbour Masters function and the update of the bylaws. Um, his, his real concern was around um, speed limits and ski areas um, across Lake Dunstan. Um, and and we, we've become, since spending more time, as I just uh, stated, we, we've become a lot more aware of the situations and the speed issues around Lake Dunstan. Um, they were all uplifted essentially quite a long time ago, and they've been functioning pretty well for a long time. However, there are occasions when uh, in the busy periods and the holiday, period, holiday periods, especially across the new year, where you've got a large amount of water, recreational boat users, and a, and a lot of speed, um, and, and potentially some conflict in areas of speed. Now, at, at this point, um, as, as the harbour master, we had the ability to um, add um, safety navigation marks and safety zones as we go forward. Um, and the other issue is that we we, we didn't see at the moment that there were any major incidents of note in this location that warranted coming heavy with a set of um, traffic separations or speed restrictions in certain areas. So really that sort of drove our, our response to this one in that, yes, we're aware of the situation. This was a positive um, feedback from a regular user on the line. And we're aware of the situations that he highlights, especially the speed management between Cromwell, between Old Cromwell and the, and the bridge. Um, it's quite narrow, there's a lot of, lot of usage. And, and really, uh, for us, it's about educating people on speeds. There's still a, a speed limit in regard to within 50 metres of another vessel or person in the water uh, or an object. So really, a lot of that should pan out quite nicely. But we're also minded that if you've got people flirting those speed restrictions, um, and you've got them coming face to face, you're doubling the speed of impact and that sort of thing. So we're, we, we'd like at this stage to keep a keen eye on that scenario with, with potentially using Harbour Master's powers to add a speed zone if we need to. Okay. Uh, but we don't feel it's appropriate to um, to come heavy handed on the speed restrictions that lack does at, at this moment in time. I, I think that once you get out of the narrow area, there's quite a vast water space. And I think there's a lot can be done which hasn't been done previously around being on the water, having a profile and people understanding that there are rules in place already and we're going to sit on them and we're going to educate you on them when we need to. So I think there's a lot we can do to improve this situation before we go down the route of being, uh, uh, what I see is a little bit more heavy handed on the, on the speed of the I think it's a good process what you've gone through, Steve, is to amalgamate um, the Central Target District Council's bylaws in there and not amend them, but just just to be able to um, just take a little bit of time to sit back and assess and have a presence there on the wake over the next 12 months or so, and then you can make decisions on whether, on whether you need to tweak things or, yeah. or you may not need to. So, good approach. Okay, thank you. So, um, the the second submission uh, was from um, a gentleman here in uh, Dunedin who heads up the kayaking um, representation here on the harbour mostly um, and uh, that gentleman initially um, indicated that he'd like to be heard at this hearing um, but we decided to uh, have a meeting with, with this chap and, uh, and discuss his issues. Essentially his issues are around kayakers and rowers on Otago Harbour and the conflict that they uh, occasionally come into um, and there have been a number of uh, relatively low profile instance in, a, in the three years I've been here in this regard. Um, and we've been working through, outside of this process, we've been working through um, a process with the rowing community in designating and um, socialising areas where you, where you will find rowers in, in high density. Um, that work's been ongoing since the previous set of hearings um, and following a couple of incidents and it's not far from being completed, to be honest. But what we've done is we've put that on hold at the moment because we feel that the kayak situation is a very similar situation, one that we can deal with in the same manner as the rowing community. Now, that can be done 
outside of a bylaw process in the Harbour Masters Directions process, which can then be socialised alongside these on our websites and various clubs and everything. Um, and it also um, comes back quite well on the side of let's let this is what we're proposing in a direction, this is what we'd like to see. We've nearly got full agreement on the kayaks and the rowers of what they want, what they'd like, and we've had really good input around the table for that. I'm just waiting on the technical charts coming back before we then formulate them into a direction. The direction allows us as RC and me as the Harbour Master um, to formulate that and um, authorise it without going through any consultation pros like, like the bylaw. Um, so that works really well. And it also allows us to adjust and uh, adapt if we need to down the line a little bit quicker. And my view on it is that the, the, both these, uh, both uh, the submitter here was happy for us to go down the process. He was surprised we were already a long way down the process with the right community. Um, and he was very happy for it to be aligned in that way. And, and my, my longer term view on it is that once this is in place as a direction, you know, when we come to review the bylaws in five years' time, if, it, if we, we may have had to tweak it and, and, and bend it to make it where it's appropriate and fit for purpose for everybody involved, at that point, that's when it potentially should go into the bylaws. Everybody's comfortable with it, it's become known, and it becomes a more static setup. Um, and it's very similar to what he can have done with their rowing um, lanes as well. So that's, the, that's been the real guiding factor. He can have similar issues. Um, that's what they've done with theirs, and, and that's what we're proposing we do with these as well. Um, and essentially, because of that, there's no requirements uh, to change any bylaws in here as consultative. So having met with the submitter, you felt from the beginning, uh, they had a good understanding of where we're going to do their concerns were pretty much alike. Very, very happy. Uh, yeah, he, he, I think he came in a bit sceptical, so if I'm honest, he, he, he walked away very happy, actually. Um, it was a good conversation. I mean, he's one of our um, key stakeholders out here. Um, and, and, you know, I think I always take the chance to do that face-to-face -face if I can with these people and go and meet them on site, understand their issues and problems. And he was very happy when he went away that that process was already, like I said, really well underway and potentially his bit could come on the side of that without any major issues at all. So that's what we're proposing on, on this one, particularly. Right. All right. Cool. Okay, and to the, to the third submitter then, um, who was a, a central um, Otago resident, um, and this was around uh, vessels to be identified. And for those who are not aware, um, when the 2017 central Otago bylaws went through, um, this, uh, the vessels to be identified bylaw was uh, proposed to go into that bylaw and council actually rejected this into their bylaws at the time. Um, so this has been, I guess, under development in New Zealand generally, um, and ECAN have been very successful in getting uh, vessels to be identified bylaw into their navigational bylaws. Um, and that essentially tells you you need to have a, a boat ID, how big it needs to be, or a trailer um, rego on it, and that sort of thing. Any, any form that, um, so the vessel can be identified for safety reasons, that's the real key element of that process. Um, we, uh, ORC's bylaws last year, incorporated that bylaw, very similar to ECANS, exactly the same to be fair, um, and so we've already got that in our bylaw. So we, with the merger, we've left the ID issue in, so it will incorporate the, the central piece as well. And, and essentially this, this uh, submitter is saying, you should have this in the Bible. So he's supportive of the process. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I won't read his further statement, but it's a very positive, supportive uh, submission. Um, and I have no issues with it. Again, because it's already in, as it was worded in the group before, we don't need to adjust it or amend it in any way, shape or form. So again, no changes to the bylaws required from that point of view. All right. And that was, that was really all we had. So. Okay. Good all right. I think that's probably pretty much it, unless um, there's any other questions or process questions, I suppose, as well. Okay, uh, I think one, one thing just to note the document we've got in front of us has got 2019 on it, it will have 2020 on it. So. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the seal of approval on the inside will have the dates changed appropriately. Um, and then the only other thing which um, we've got is, is uh, we've updated this 
chart in the back, which is the area for which ORC is responsible in green, and the area in blue is somebody else's. And yeah. We did have late dust in blue, so that's been updated very slightly. Uh, and then the late dust in chart, which uh, we've added, uh, but we've, we're just playing with that at the moment because we've uh, noticed a couple of spelling mistakes that have been wording that's missing up the top corner here. So yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll be added in as appendices as it, as it states in the front of the book there. So that's really. Right. So yeah. this is sort of see the, the latest version of the rules that you've been going well, we'll go live once again. Well, I'll put first of September, yeah, because the intention is to uh, uh, is to get the hearing panel's recommendations into council uh, July, July's council meeting yeah. at the end of July, uh, and therefore for, I want the first of September in order to give us time to produce the uh, the documents mm. and everything from there. So it's appropriate. The key thing is to get it in before the sort of recreational season yeah. kicks off, yeah. Yeah. for yeah. us, and then we can start to socialise it and educate it. That's good. Okay, one question then on. Asking, um, is yeah, you kind of mentioned the um, Harbour Master's powers of direction and almost an adaptive management type of approach if need be. Uh, so, for example, with the submitter um, and the kayaks and the rowing and interaction there. So, if need be, you could issue a direction. Um, but I just wanted to understand um, how the direction. Works like yeah. is it immediate or is it quite a process you have to go through? How does that work? No, it's immediate. Um, yeah. So uh, the powers deferred down to my role yeah. allow me to um, to adapt the bylaws, but through a process that we've just gone through the second time, uh, and that's all obviously um, sort of noted and processed in place. For that the Harbour Master directions allow me to um, make that direction immediately or in the next week or so whenever it's fit and appropriate for me to make that decision or put that in place so sometimes it's uh it's like this is not a quick thing that we need to do uh, but i might have um you know a restriction to the channel or something like that yeah. and I, I can put an immediate direction on traffic flows or restrictions straight away instantly so yeah. it gives me the power to manage a situation yeah. Long term, and short term, and irrelevant, yeah. as long as it's yeah. around navigational safety. Yeah. That's yeah. the key thing. They get a lot quicker yeah. rather than yeah. trying to make an amendment to your bold, which is yeah. quite more difficult. And then, yeah. like Steve, uh, Steve said, it's, it's mainly um, in the interest of navigation safety. Yeah. 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 It's a useful tool. It's not one we particularly use a lot here yet, yeah. uh, but there's two or three in the in the pipeline now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's something we'll start to see. And we'll socialise it on the Harbour Masters web page and then through, usually it's a, a, depending on which stakeholder group it is, commercial, recreational, we, yeah. we've started to amass those details. So they're easy to pin to the right groups of people as we need to. Oh, that's great. So it works really well, actually. It's a good tool to have. Yeah, like you say, as you, you might get new groups of people utilising yeah. different areas of water bodies and yeah. we need to adapt and be, you know, that's great to know that the mechanism, so, but, there's, there's, yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't aware until recently as parasailing goes on Lake Dunstan, you know, so it was new, it was like, oh, <laughs> so that's, you know, it's a whole yeah. different thing, so it's quite interesting yeah. to see what's going on around. So. Okay. Well, that's good. I think we've finished the um, formal part of the hearing then. Uh, we'll deliberate now and do that in um, private. Yep. Yep. Cool. So we can probably end our YouTube streaming at this point. And yeah, we'll deliberate today.